What's up, YouTube? It's Artisan MC, and today I binged on Six Underground. Now, this is a Netflix show starring Ryan Reynolds, and I hadn't heard anything about it, so special props to um, Black Mane Sam for pulling my coattail on this. Um, I watched it, and I actually did enjoy it, and he pushed it to me as um, better than Hitman's Bodyguard. And so I had to give it give it a watch. I had time, so I did it. And I kind of enjoyed this. This was a Netflix show that I thought was big budget in scale. I thought it was a series. Turned out to be actually just a movie. And there's a lot of freaking over the top action in this. And there's a reason for that, and I'll tell you in a minute. But for the most part, you get Ryan Reynolds, who is this billionaire. He created some technology that's in every cell phone, so he has a lot of money at his disposal. And he assembles a team of people to go out into the world and kind of right the wrongs that are there, taking out the bad people. But how they see fit to do this is by declaring themselves dead by dying and by dying they remove themselves from the grid and now they are free to act and involve themselves in these affairs without any repercussions or any way for other people to track them now on the face it sounds like an interesting concept but in practice i think <laughs> I hate to say this since I'm talking about a movie, but in reality, I think that'd be a little bit more harder to do because you still need things like money and all the rest of that. But besides that fact, um, this team of individuals that Ryan Reynolds character um, going by number one, because everybody on this team has number designations by dying. They give up their original identities and take on new identities as just the numbers in this group. And there's only six. So, in the beginning of this, you get um, Ryan Reynolds and his team out on their first mission. And you're treated by the surprise of Dave Franco being number six, the driver. And it's funny as hell for me to see Dave Franco in this. Because if you don't know, that's James Franco's younger brother. And he's been in a couple of movies that I've liked. He's, he's an alright actor. But... Um, <laughs> I kept watching for a second because the pacing is so fast. And I'm like, holy shit, that's, that's Dave Franco. But don't get used to that because they quickly move on to their next mission and taking on a new um, team member. And this is in the form of Corey Hawkins character, who is a ex Delta Four sniper. And he is number seven. So this team is made up of individuals with special skills. And they come together to overthrow this dictator of this country. Now, I'm not going to tell you any more about that because it'll spoil it. But I will tell you the biggest surprise in this whole show, once getting to the end of it, was finding out that this was a Michael Bay production. And that made everything fall into place for me off the bat. Because I'm looking at the action and it's... Not gory in some scenes, but graphic in some scenes. And I'm thinking of the car chases and explosions and all this. And I'm wondering, like, how the hell did Ryan Reynolds pull off all this? Because there's a lot of money going into all these stunts and effects. Right? But you get to the end and find out Michael Bay directed it. And then it totally makes sense. All the military the hardware, Michael Bay for... Whatever he may or may not be, he has the backing of the military and he gets to use all the toys when he shows up to do a movie. So props to him on that. Um, the movie was fun. Um, midway into the episode where they're constantly using movie references was really annoying at first, but kind of comical in a way because then you're picking it out. But I like the dialogue and the casting because it... It's like a Mission Impossible movie in a sense, but it's fresh. It's not taking itself overly seriously. Some scenes are tongue-in-cheek and some scenes are just 
like regular people dealing in this situation. So if you want to see something that was like Deadpool without a mask and better than um, X-Force getting killed off in Deadpool 2, I would uh, give this a watch. It might be entertaining for you. It's only, what, I think two hours, so you can get in and get out, and if you didn't like it, you'll never have to watch it again. But if you did, you can, you can watch it again and see if they make a, a part two to it. So with that, I'm going to end it right here. Um, check it out. It's on Netflix. It just came out and might be good for a watch. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.